Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the eighth video in this series of uh, interviews of English, uh, PPSC English lectureship exam. Uh, I would uh, extend my uh, like uh, feelings and thanks to all who are watching here. And it is a news to share that one of the students who went for her interview, uh, she was able to answer at least four to five questions uh, through this class. So let's go towards the uh, important questions which are which are asked here in this 2020 interview uh, saga or session. So the first question for today is the difference between dirge and elegy. So apparently both are same things. Both are written about uh, some mourning, about some loss. Uh, dirge is a song. Uh, poem that is written about or that is sung when a person is dead. So this is a funeral song. So it is uh, more relevant to the exact funeral time when the person is dead. And elegy can be written afterwards. So it is also a song of mourning when, in which you are remembering someone like uh, Shelley wrote Adonis for Keats. So it can be written afterwards maybe 10 years afterwards, that doesn't matter. But dirge is uh, particular to the, that very scene. Then uh, what is difference between transitive and intransitive verbs? So a transitive verb is the one that only makes sense if it exerts its action on an object. Like we had an example, uh, he flies, now, flies what, we are unsure. So if we add kite to it, so he flies kite. So this is, or this makes it complete. But an intransitive verb will make sense without one. I eat, or he uh, sleeps. So this is not need object use karne ki zarurat nahi hai. Going further, Message in first year at Harrow. So this was, uh, or this is the first lesson in second year book by Winston Churchill, who was there after Prime Minister of England. Now Churchill here uh, tells the importance of uh, the will of a student, or just he has an aptitude. So Churchill focuses on this thing that we should not. Uh, like uh, we should be very wise in choice of subjects. Like uh, sometimes we choose the subjects and uh, afterwards we feel that we have done a lot of mistakes, we don't understand anything. And basically like uh, uh, like uh, when we time in this way, some people drag on, let's read it, so let's carry on. Karte so that is the disastrous decision ever. So he believes that you should choose wisely. Suspension of disbelief. So it is related to Coleridge and his uh, poetic style. He uses supernatural elements in his poetry. And we see that uh, he shows uh, a ghost. He shows uh, supernatural beings. He shows uh, a girl or a, a ghost in form of a girl and many such supernatural cases. But he, his writing style is so convincing that our disbelief on these supernatural things is suspended. So his writings suspend that disbelief that we may be having on supernatural. If we don't believe in these things, we don't think that this is going to kill his writing. We try to love it. 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 We try to This may have happened. Like Rhyme of the Ancient Marina or Christabel. Uh, so that is altogether very convincing and catching. So what are affixes? So affixes are divided into two broader categories. This may have uh, suffixes or prefixes. Suffixes like un, uh, yani ungrateful, or uh, less, yani, uh, foolishlessness, yannes bhi a sakta hai isme. So, ye, uh, uh, foolishness, jo hai, usme less or less, ye suffixes hai, un, ya in, ya disagree, me dis, ye prefixes hai. Mukhtalif languages ke andar infixes bhi hote hai, jo ke fixes ka part hai, lekin wo English me use nahi hote. 
Hamlet trait in you. So what could be the ham? Uh, what could be the trait of Hamlet that you find lies with you? So this is the general question, um, and uh, uh, you, if uh, you want to deny it, I don't think there is any harm in denying it. If uh, truly there is no trait of Hamlet with you, uh, he was uh, altogether a lazy fellow. Like he was pending things, he was thinking more, he was uh, contemplating more on issues. He has his own psychology. So if you feel that you don't have these habits of delaying works or thinking uh, much before doing some work, so you can uh, say that, okay, this is uh, what I feel it is with me. What is resurrection? So this is uh, rebirth, to live again. Or just pay non believers believe Nikar Tetelek and Allah on a show Kraiga, Jolana Pelone show Kiabi, K. I can resurrect the people. So ye, uh, Hazatisabi, uh, Allah K. Hukamse, uh, Murdek and the Jandal, that was also resurrection. So resurrection has been a theme in literature. And the next question, how is resurrection a theme in a tale of two cities? So this is a major theme in a tale of two cities. First of all, Dr. Manet about whom everybody is believing that he is long dead, is recovered from Defarge's wine shop. He's up, uh, he's in the uh, upper room where he's mending shoes as per his practice in the cellar. So this is one example of a resurrection. Then secondly, Charles Darnay at his trial is saved by Sidney Carton because he and Sidney Carton are lookalikes. So this is second resurrection. Third resurrection in this is Jerry Crunchers digging up the graves. So that is a kind of resurrection. And then fourth one, the important one, is uh, Sidney Carton's replacing places with Charles Starney and uh, setting him free. And he dies on, uh, or he goes to the gallows uh, on his place. So that is fourth resurrection. Did Shakespeare possess negative capability? So the answer to this is yes. Uh, Shakespeare uh, possessed it so enormously. So he possessed it to accept uncertainties, mysteries, doubts, without any irritable reaching after fact and reason. Like John Keats, who used this term ko use kiya first time in 1817, he accepts that there are many things that are beyond human ki jo thinking capacity of se beyond hai. So, we have to do some logical reasoning, we have to do some reasoning, we have to do some reasoning, we have accept it. So, this is the negative capability of John Keats. He has to do some reasoning, 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 he has he is accepting what is happening. So Shakespeare ke plays ke andram dekhte hain uncertainties hain, mysteries hain, doubts hain. Or jin ko uh, kai dafa, for example, uh, tragic comedy mein, jo we believe that Hermione in, uh, uh, in Winter's Tale is dead, but she comes back to life, or she was not dead at all. So how did this happen? So such things are uh, the representation of his uh, negative capability. So he did have negative capability. Uh, and uh, like John Keats, Joy was me is a while again. An author possessing negative capabilities, objective and emotionally detached, at spurs to one who writes for didactic purposes. A literary work possessing negative capability may have beauties and depths that make conventional considerations of truth and morality irrelevant. Going further. Who were the Ottomans? So Ottomans, Sultanate e Usmania, which is called Usman, ke, uh, Usman, Ghazi, Usman ke naam pe ye naam rakha gaya. who was son of Ertagrul, the uh, famous drama which we are watching nowadays, which is called Charpain Seasons. Hai. So uh, Usman was probably his uh, third born, third beta, tha, I guess. So ye Usman the who went to the Sultanate of Usmania and then with a huge globe, Jota, Usko, Inone, Conquer, Kia, 
और बाद में ऑटोमंस के बारे में आपने सुना होगा एक लास्ट ट्रेन भी एक मूवी थी जिसमें जो ऑटोमन उस जमाने में खैलिफ थे उन्होंने सऊदीया से जब यहाँ पे उन्हें लगा कि चीजें सेफ नहीं है तो मुतबरकत को उठा के वहां से ये टर्की ले आए और वहां पे इन्होंने उसको सेव किया तो उसके बाद फिर जब हम देखते हैं कि ये अता तुर्क आया वर्ल्ड वॉर वगैरह वो ऑटोमन जो ये था वो खत्म हो गया अब दोबारा वो जो एक इनका वो पीरियड था समझौते का वो खत्म हो रहा है एंड टर्क इज अगेन प्लानिंग फॉर ये खिलाफत नेम एनी फाइव पोस्ट कलोनियल राइटर्स सो दिस क्वेश्चन शुड बी आंसर्ड अकॉर्डिंगली एवरी वन इज राइटर तो नॉवलिस्ट पूछेंगे सो यू शुड टेल द नॉवलिस्ट अगर इस लह से देखा जाए तो वी हैव एडवर्ट साइड वी हैव फ्रेंड्स पनन वी हैव होमी के बाबा वी हैव गायत्री चक्रवर्ती we have helen tiffin we have uh, gareth griffins we have george lemmings we have uh, uh, ben okri we have shin uh, uh, shinwa ashibi we have joseph conrad ahmed ali uh, uh, apart from them we have uh, ijaz ahmed sam sevlin leela gandhi we have ray show we have uh, anya lumba so there's so many names uh, whom you can quote there and then is there any role of fate in dr forsters yes fate tries to play its role but major role that is played is by dr forsters jis tarah yani uske paas ye sari cheeze aati hain usko acche bure ki tameez sikhai jati hai good and evil angel aata hai old man aata hai jo usse batata hai but it is his own ambition जो कि उसके डाउनफॉल का सब बनता है सो ही इज हिमसेल्फ सो एम्बिशियस कि वो चाहता है कि वो पूरी दुनिया को तस्खीर कर ले सो उसमें उसकी जो विल है वो ज्यादा प्रोमिनेंट है तो उसका अपना कसूर ज्यादा है फेट का रोल कम है वाई डिड यू चूज लिटरेचर सो दिस इज अ जनरल क्वेश्चन बट यू शुड बी प्रिपेयर फॉर इट कि आपने लिटरेचर चूज क्यों किया यू कैन कम अप विद योर ओन लॉजिक फॉर इट for example literature helps explore and analyze some of life's greatest questions and assist young people in gaining the skills required for deeper thought process to live so this may be one of the logics aap keh sakte hain ji literature hai that tells you uh, the way to criticism it makes you more human it brings a uh, humbleness in you it makes you uh think about certain things with different approaches so whatever you feel literature is in your mind you can come up with the same idea but uh, anyway the answer should be logical one so talking about themes of emma so emma uh the play uh, the novel by uh jane austen so in this novel we find so many themes first of all money and marriage Uh, which is always a theme prevalent theme in jane austen's works then emma's education gender limitations misperceptions pride and vanity social class so these are prominent themes in her novel so that is all for today i hope these were clear enough thank you very much